around 30,000 known species of fish on the planet, but not all of them are found in the ocean. As well as common species, museum collections are a valuable home to fishes that are either extinct or endangered. And how they get here is quite a story. Our oldest specimen is a, a hokey taken in Wellington Harbour in 1869, and it's still in quite good condition. The collection itself is uh, just over 45,600 registered lots, uh, comprising around 200,000 specimens. And this is the biggest collection of preserved New Zealand fishes anywhere in the world. Now we hold these specimens here for the nation in trust for future generations to research them. Visiting researchers will come in, students, doctoral, PhD students, master's students will access the collection for data. Visiting scientists from overseas wanting to examine specimens from our waters and compare them to other areas. It's like a, a library, only instead of books we have preserved fishes. And the people who come in and, and use this have learnt to read these books. Who are the people that submit fish to the collection? All kinds of people. Anyone who's interested in fish and fishing, uh, skippers, crews on boats, scientific observers, Niwa scientists, anyone who finds a fish. And uh, some of them get very enthusiastic about collecting fishes. I had one couple, they would go out and collect fishes and then they'd come in together carrying their specimens and it'd be a little competition as to who could have brought back the most interesting fish for Andrew and, and I'd be opening it up and saying oh this is a such and such and one would be going see I got that. Uh, they wound up getting married which is kind of sweet. <laughs> the biggest fish, sharks and sea creatures have large metal caskets rather than jars. Most fish are preserved in alcohol but they all enter the collection in the autopsy room. Yep. Right, well, we've got a mixed tray of thawing specimens here, and we're just going to take out the next one, identify it, and uh, register it. These came out of the freezer, and we're just keeping them in very cold water to help hold their colour. What's that one there? Yeah, we believe this is a cheeseman's puffer. I'm just going to identify it. Diamond-shaped patch of prickles on the head before the dorsal fin, and the body lacks spots. So, yes, this is, this is cheeseman's puffer. Registration number 45601. Next step is to take a, a very small plug of tissue from the body, preserved in ethanol for DNA analysis. Helps to us in our understanding of, of what species are where. So the next step is to take it through into the laboratory and pin out the fins. And that's it done. So next stage is to paint on with concentrated formalin. And so that's formalin? Yes. And what is that exactly? It does two things that we want. First thing is it kills bacteria. Uh, the second thing is it, it creates what's called cross-links between the sheets of protein and it, it uh, locks that protein together so that once it's been fixed, even though it's been stored in alcohol, you can handle that specimen and it's quite robust. And after a day of archiving fish, I mean, do you go home and do the sort of local stray cats follow you around? No, but I get some comments from my family sometimes about <laughs> Some of the smells. I go home and I've got fish books on my library shelf and I've got a fish tank, so I love fish. <laughs> I don't mind. My family objects. <laughs> Andrew and the team undertake a long but incredibly important process. The measurements, photographs and samples will be entered into a master database which can be used for future research. With our oceans under threat from global warming, this collection will be a treasured archive for generations to come.